Welcome to The Traveling Professors. I'm Professor Bob. And I'm Professor Sherry. And together, we are The The Traveling Traveling Professors. Professors. Welcome to show 101 of The Traveling Professors. Today, Sherry and I are going to take you on a walk through the Agora of Athens. We're going to try to walk up to the Acropolis, but we will fail. But you will at least see what it would have looked like as far as we could go. We'll be seeing the whole area, the Church of the Apostles, the Stoa of Attalus, and of course the Temple of Hephaestus, and the other parts that are in there as well. But those three buildings are there, and they're intact. Now there are a lot of ways to get to the Agora. One of them is instead of where we walked up to the Acropolis, you could continue down that road and come around the other side and enter. It's a little on the long side. We have walked it, and that would be since our hotel was located right here. We went down to the main square, to the Thigema, and took this road right here, took it right down and it comes right out in the center of the Mustraki area where the shopping is and the flea market. And then you walk around and there's the Agora as well. Now, if you don't want to walk that far, there is a metro there at the Stigima station right across from the Parliament building that will take you to the basically about where the flea market is. And then you can get right out, walk in, head to the Agora. Now, we went on Sunday and we were there early and there wasn't anybody there. We had the place all to ourselves. It does get more crowded, particularly during the day. We had lunch at about time church was getting out and then the Agora was filled up with people. Once more to remind you of what it was in ancient times. You see before the Persian War and then you see the additions that are added on later and then that which Hadrian added. And he also adds a another Agora, a Roman one. But the main Agora is located right here. Now one of the things, once again, when you go to one of these sites, look at the number of buildings that you have here. Which ones are complete? Well, you have the Stoa of Atlas, which is now the Agora Museum. They have the church up here, Aia Pastoli, and of course you see the Temple of Hephaestus. And then everything else is a foundation with a few statues and some other things. I would suggest if you're planning on doing this in Athens to get Rick Steves' guidebook to Greece because he has a wonderful walking tour of this. And we, tre- we used it, but uh, what we ended up doing was crossing the middle stoa and getting over to the Temple of Hephaestus and then coming back and then trying to get up to the Acropolis by the Panhellenic Way, which was blocked. So we ended up finishing up our little, little trip by going to the Nymphion and the church and then leaving. Well, we're going to take the train today or the metro. So we take our little walk up the blocks to Stigima Square, go down into the metro, get our train. It operates just like all the other metro lines throughout Europe. We get on the train and then it heads to the Mastraki. And I'll show you what the station looks like when we go back. And so we get out. Here's our route going down the street here to the entrance. So this is our view as we're coming down the street. Actually here you're seeing part of Hadrian's Agora. But we got to go a little bit further down. And then you can see the Stoa of Atlas. And then you come to the entrance. It's pretty much the same type of entrance as they have everywhere. And then after you pay for your ticket, we walk in and there's a view of the Acropolis from this direction. Now we're actually, this road coming in would be called the Panhellenic Way. This route would take you all the way up to that main entrance at the Acropolis that we were at the last time. So here's a view as we come in. It's going to walk through the trees here. There are some small temples, some foundations, but we'll talk about those when we go back the second time. What we're doing, we're heading towards the Stoa of Atlas. And as you can see from this, as we've come through the gate, we have a view of what is known as the Odeon of Agrippa. This was a magnificent building with a roof on it for entertainment and all sorts of events. All that's left of it now is its foundation and some of the statues. So we finally come to the Stoa of Atlas. A Stoa is a place where people would get together and talk and do business. There are shops here as well. And most Greek cities have one of these. And to give you an idea of just how important it is, after the Persian Wars, a town was so badly in debt that they had to sell their stoa to another town. And the Athenians heard about it and gave them the money to keep theirs because there wouldn't be any place for the people to congregate. So you could say this is where you would meet philosophers and other people. There would have been musicians here. And again, you would have stalls where people would have been selling items. So here we are down the 
the road here. Again, you can see the Acropolis off to one side, and there's the, you can see the top story of the building. The original one is built in 159 to 138 BCE. It's not built by the Athenians. It was a gift from King Pergamum Atlas II, and it is 116 meters long, and it has two floors. And the exterior of the columns, those are going to be Doric. And then the interior columns are Ionic. And we are entering to the to the front. They've turned it into a museum. So when you get in a little deeper, where you would have had stalls, perhaps, in each of these different openings, what you have is a door, and that's the entry that takes you into the museum. So here we've walked all the way down to the end, getting a nice view of this. You see the beautiful marble floor. This, the building was destroyed in 267 AD by the Herulians. And the building was, what was left of it, the foundation was then put into the wall fortifications of Athens. It was rebuilt between 1952 and 1956 by the American School of Classical Studies. Now, all the way down on the end, you see this grate over the door. You can go on the inside, and that's how you get up to the second level. And the second level, which you see here, has all sorts of different events. They have showings of art. There's some statues in here. There's a variety of things, but it also has this spectacular view of the whole area. So here's a closer view of the roof, and they have a nice model of the Agora that you can look at. We're right over here in this particular building in this picture, and this is the same building right here. And you're looking out and you see what was directly in front of it is the Odeon of Agrippa. Well, here's a view off one section where you can see the train lines, the metro lines as well, and the area where you cross over the tunnel, that's where the entrance was. And the building that has the awning over it is where Sherry and I are going to end up having lunch. Taking another view from another location, this is the view towards the Temple of Hephaestus. And then, of course, we walk all the way to the other end so that we can see its view of the Acropolis. So it's wonderful location. And, of course, it has this really, really wonderful museum. In the Stoa of Atlas on the lower level, you have the Agora Museum. And it has a lot of items from everyday life. It's really fascinating to see. Here we have up two swords with some other equipment. There's all sorts of burials there. So here's an example of an unusual sepulcher burial because normally they don't allow you to use that much space. Then here we have an object where the lid has the three horses on the top of it. And then we have a recreation of the toy that would have been available from the pieces that were found. So it was probably a pool toy. Then we have some gold objects, some earrings, some rings. A very small funeral urn where you would have had the ashes of the individual placed in it. And then here we have a unique item. This is an object to help train children to use the potty. So it's made out of ceramic. Once you're in Athens, they give the assembly an opportunity to get rid of someone who they believe is detrimental to the state. And they usually take broken pieces of blackware, such as you see here, and scrawl the person's name on them. And if enough of these are put in, then the person gets exiled, usually for life, but sometimes they are brought back. These, however, are a little different. These were made, these were manufactured discs to hand out to people in the assembly, and they all have Themistocles' name on it. They believe he had gotten too powerful after the Persian Wars, and they needed to exile him. And he was indeed exiled, and spent the rest of his life as an advisor to the Persian kings. Now, in normal situations where you had voting at the assembly, this is what they used. This is one of the surviving voting counters. And what you had is you had your own chit. And here's the little discs that had your name on it. Then you would insert it into the device and your location, and then they could be counted. Here we have a bronze shield that had been donated to the gods from the Battle of Marathon. This helmet is believed to be Militates' helmet, or what survives of it, because his name is scrawled on the one side of it, and he was the commander of the day at the Battle of Marathon. Now, when you spoke at the assembly, you had a limited amount of time, and this device is how they limited it. You had a certain amount of water at the top, and when it ran out, the person would then raise a flag and say, it's over. Of course, the joke is that sometimes you would just pay him to put a little more water into it. So that is the kind of objects, these unique objects that you find here at the Agora Museum.
So here we are exiting the Stoa of Atlas. And on our map, you can see where we came out. And now we're going to go across what was known as the Middle Stoa, which is actually much older. There's a variety of things to see because we're heading over to the Temple of Hephaestus. So coming out, looking across this broad area, you see where the stumps of the columns, where the Stoa. So this was, was very large. So there is a lot of people that come to the Agora, purchase things, and they have discussions with other people. You're looking up and you see this little hill up above. That is the area where the assembly meets. And a little closer view of the columns as we're crossing. And as you can see, it's pretty extensive. When we get about halfway across, we come to this spot, which is this gigantic column top. This Corinthian style, because it was part of the uh, Odeon of Agrippa. And then this is a view, if, if we're standing where the back of the Odeon would have been. Now this was built, the Odeon was put in place in 15 BCE. It was a donation from Marcus Agrippa, the good friend of, of Augustus. It was an auditorium, we could have musical, some theater and whatever else. And you see some of the four columns. We'll be walking by it again on our way to attempt to go up the Panhellenic Way to the Acropolis. And then here we are coming to the end of the middle stoa. As you can start seeing part of the wall here in the back because there was a wall that went around this whole thing. And then we keep walking by seeing different ruins. It's a nice view of the Temple of Hephaestus which we are headed towards. But a couple of things. We are coming to the area where they drain most of the water when it rains. So here is one of the wells that's in the area. And here we have an example of where the wall was. This Obviously it was much taller. It was part of defensive works of the city. And in this picture you not only see the wall but you see this drainage area coming through here. This is what is known as the Great Drain. There's a little closer view of the edge of it. You can see it's pretty deep. And then this shows the schematics of lattice work where they're moving all this water out. And then here are some of the examples of, of the drain itself. I see it would have been covered. It's very effective in draining the region. Here's some of the other views of it. Call it the Great Drain, because otherwise it might end up being the Great Swamp if you're not careful. Here's a map showing Athens in the 5th century BCE. So this would be Athens prior to it being destroyed in the Second Persian War. And we've just finished coming across, and we're right about here. So we're going to go up, see the Temple of Hephaestus, but I thought it'd be an opportunity to talk about about some of these buildings along in here, which will be destroyed, then rebuilt. Here's a model showing the structures. So what you have, this round item is called the Tholos, and this one is known as the Old Buleterion, and back behind it is the Metron, which is a little meeting area as well as being archives and the sanctuary of the mother god. And of course this is what it would have looked like if you're coming into Athens to visit this place. It's busy, there's all sorts of activities going on. One of the things that you walk by is this structure right here. Now this is known as the Monument to Eponymus. Uh, it was built in 350 BCE and what was, was on top of this was the statues of the mythical heroes of the ten Athenians tribes. And so they would have been in that location. And then you come along. This is the old Buleterion. This is where the Council of 500 would have met. And then this is what it would have looked like on the inside. This is what it looks like today. Now there would have been a temple here. And then there would have been the other that building back in this section. And then we come to what is known as the new Buleterion. Again, the meeting place of the Council of 500 where the, what they call the Bule met. Uh, every year there are 50 representatives from each of the 10 tribes of Athens that are elected and they kind of run the day-to-day -day operations of the city. It was created by Cleisthenes, the last of the three great lawgivers, 508 to 507 BCE. This is a drawing of what it would have looked like from the interior. There's the old one in the back and the little sanctuary in the front, the Metron. And then this is looking what would have been the steps. This is a set of steps that would have gone up to the rostrum. And then here we have the new Buleterion. As you can see it didn't do very well. It hasn't survive very well. But one of the most important parts of the whole place is this little round building, the Tholos. Now, the Tholos was built about 500 BCE and was abandoned 
They're still in use until 400 AD. Circular building, it was where the location of what are called the Praetorians. That's 50 members of the Boule. And what would happen, 50 members of the Boule would serve 35 to 36 days here, 24 hours a day, and then they'd be placed, and another group would take it on a rotating basis. At night, there were always 17 people here in case there was an emergency. One of the things this thing housed was the official weights and measures of Athens. So if we're in the marketplace and there's a question of a dealer over his weights and measures. Any citizen could go to this building and ask for a ruling and they would take the devices and check it out. And it was in, if the man was incorrect or was cheating him, then they would arrest him or fine him and all sorts of other stuff. In addition, if there's arguments, fights, they could all be adjudicated right here. So it was a very, very important building. Well, now we have to walk up behind all those buildings to get to the Temple of Hephaestus. So here is the chart showing what we're going to do. And so it's a nice little walk through the ants and flowers and we get a little closer. And then we open up to this area. This is known as the rostra. And here is the view that a person speaking at this rostrum would have over the city. And goes, so if you needed to speak to the group of people and you could do all sorts of things from up here. And so you had a, this is a very powerful position. Now I am not doing a Nazi salute, I'm trying to just basically wave my hands to greet the people of Athens. The picture was just snapped at an inappropriate time. And then here's the view from up there. So here's what would have been the steps leading down into the center of the Agora. And then here's a view off to the side where the middle stoa was located. And then here's the view looking up at the wonderful Acropolis. And then after saluting the people of Athens, we then marched up our little path and come out to see the Temple of Hephaestus. What a beautiful sight of the Temple of Hephaestus. Now this was built in 460 to 420 BCE. As you can see, it's in just excellent condition, although the pigeons have kind of scarred it up a little bit on the inside. Uh, it was built on pentalytic mar marble. It housed the cult statue of Hephaestus and Athena on the sides that you see here. If you on one side, you had the nine labors of Hercules. On the other side, you have four labors of Theseus. The front pediment had either Hercules being welcomed into Olympus or the birth of Athena, and the back one had the centaur monkey. In other words, the leadership of the centaurs. So there you are. We're looking up in the front. Look down. It's really nice to look down the columns because you can see what is known as the urn effect. Here's a close-up. You can see if you put the columns in the right positions, they produce this all the time. It's called the urn effect. And here we are right directly front looking towards what would be the sanctuary. And this is what you would have had. You see, you would have had your statue of Athena and the statue of, of Hephaestus. And look up into the roof. A little, a little faded over the years. It's darkened with time. This was not destroyed by the Persians. So that's one of the reasons it has survived for so long. Nice set of steps leading in. It's the other side showing the urn down the back side and they got some of the doors blocked. You're not supposed to go in it anyway, but they have some of these that are blocked up. This was turned into a, a Christian church in the 7th century AD. It remained a, a church until after the Turkish takeover of Greece. And then there's some views looking into the inner sanctum of the temple. And again, another view even from another direction. Anytime you have the columns, they're all going to make this nice, beautiful urn effect. And so now we're, we're going to try and walk up the Panhellenic Way to the Acropolis. So there's our parting view as we head basically back across the same territory that we did when we first came in. You can see from the map that we're going to be going, so we're going to go across this direction. The first thing we come to is the colossal statue, or at least what's left of the colossal statue, of Hadrian. Hadrian loved Athens. He did a lot of restoration work here. So then we move on across. First place we come to is this flat area, which was the Temple of Ares. And then just on the other side of, of that is the altar of Ares. And then we come right in front of entrance to the Odeon of Agrippa. So these are the monumental statues that would have been beautiful and bringing you into this place. So here's a little closer view. There's a really nice close-up of one of the statues. And then here's looking back as we're passing by. This is what it would have looked like in, in originally. And it would have been very nice, beautiful structure. And you can see from this artistic rendition, this is the Panhellenic Way, this main road. It's very wide, used every four years to bring the new clothes to the temple, to the statue of Athena. And you see where the Odeon is located. One thing that is not here is the Stoa of Attalus. That's not built a little bit later. And then this shows the whole route up to the Acropolis. 
they actually have it blocked off just after you leave the uh, main part of the Agora. Now, I've had a former student who lived in Greece when it wasn't like that. So some of the pictures I'm going to show you are her pictures because I asked her if she would walk up with her boyfriend and just take some pictures, which she did. So I'm not going to show you the chain link fence that blocks us. So I'll make it look like we went all the way up to the top. So as we're going up, you see some of the wall, the old wall of the city. Of course, after the barbarians damaged it, they just put pieces everywhere, whatever they could find. So you have the defensive wall on one side. Here's the view, looking up the Panhellenic Way. Uh, if, if you were to get an opportunity to walk up to the Acropolis this way, don't take it. It makes the route that Sherry and the family and I took the first day we were in Athens look like a, a cakewalk because it really, really gets steep, and you can judge that. The chain link fence really ran across right about here. But if you got beyond that, this is your view. So you can see going on up the, the hill, and then it steepens significantly. And then again, you reach the spot where we came from the other direction, and there we have the entrance into the Acropolis. And then this is a look back down that you've seen when we were doing the Acropolis, but this is a view back to where you would have started there's the Temple of Hephaestus down here. That's a long ways up. So when we couldn't go into the, go up that direction, that saved us actually. We then decided to hit a couple of other little places. So the area above where the middle stoa was, there are a couple of buildings. One of them is a little nymphium, which is a spring area. So you have this, this area right here, and then here's the, where the spring comes out. And then you have the view back behind. And then we came up to the Church of the Apostle Saints. It's an Orthodox church. It was built in the early 10th century, so in the 900s. And of course, we we're here on Sunday, so that was great. We went inside, said, our, said some prayers. There was no service going on. It's not a, an official church anymore. But it was quiet and beautiful and a wonderful thing to see without other people. So we walked all the way around. So I took pictures from all the way around the building. It's a relatively tiny little thing. There's some of the work on the front of it. Beautiful central tower, the crucifix. So now we need to go in. So we go into the front and there's the altar. And you see in the early churches, they have they don't have an iconostasis. In an Orthodox church, you have the opening, which you see the altar, and then you would have paintings of saints and the Virgin Mary and, and other apostles and what have you. And in the early church, they didn't have that, but they need a set, needed a separation to keep the people from the altar area. The services, your communion would be taken on the opposite side here of this little wall. And they frequently just used old temple pieces, just flipped them around and put a different motif on the front of them. The Temple of Athena at the Acropolis was actually a Christian church in the early days. It's a beautiful picture of the altar area, the light. There's one of the panels. There's a close-up of the area in front of the altar. Pictures of the columns holding up the building. Beautiful marble work in the center of underneath the dome. And the weight on these is pretty, pretty powerful on the columns. So they have these iron braces to keep them from uh, disintegrating, which is not a, um, a good feeling. There's a view up to the windows. The Orthodox Church did not use stained glass windows. And here's the view, however, up into the, into the dome. You see the figure in the center. So that's the original. Still have some of the original paint in the building. Some of the apostles and angels on the side. So after we finished the church, uh, we then headed back went out the way we came in, went directly across the street to this building and had lunch. And about the time we got there, church was lighting out. So the crowds really developed at that point. And there's a nice little lunch that we had. You can look out, and you're looking across, you can see the uh, Stoa of Atlas over here. And on the way back, we walked through the Athens flea market. There is, There are some people that have antiques and stuff, but most of it's just regular shops. We went back to the metro, and I told you this when we first started. When they dug the metro, they of course hit ancient ancient artifacts everywhere. So all of the stations have little sections, and in this case, this was part of the watering and sewerage system of ancient Athens that you can uh, view. So you can walk around, you go by it as you're going from one part of the station to the other. Uh, it was rebuilt by the Romans and 
but it's really fascinating to see this. Several of the other stops have statues that they found. So Sherry and I hope you enjoyed that. Sherry and I hope you enjoyed the tour. Please come by our YouTube channel at Bob Packett and please subscribe and leave some comments. Thank you very much. I've been doing podcasting on history for over 15 years. I've got over 4,000 shows and I've done CDs, which of course can be sent out as USBs. So if you would really like to get more on history for free, then come by my website, as you see here, historyaccordingtobob.com and see what's there. So thank you very much again.